Good evening and welcome to the City of Woodstock's virtual public planning meeting for Monday, October the 13th, 2020. Tonight's meeting is an open public meeting as required by the Planning Act. This meeting is being live streamed to the city's YouTube channel and a recording of the meeting will also be posted on the city's website following the meeting. An agenda can be found on the agendas, meetings and minutes page on the city's website under city inside City Hall at the Inside City Hall heading on the city of Woodstock.ca homepage. Uh, present tonight are members of uh, City Council, our Deputy City Clerk, Elisa Dijek, a City uh, Engineer and Building Department Manager, Rick Craig Wallace, and of course the IT Department is here as well, and the Senior Planner from the County of Oxford, Andrea Hackler, with her many presentations. There will actually be three presentations on the agenda in total. This meeting is for information and discussion purposes only, and no decisions will be made at this meeting tonight. Council will make a decision on these matters at the regular council meeting, which is to be held on Thursday. That's a Thursday, October the 15th at 1.30 in the afternoon. It will also be available on the city's a YouTube channel. That meeting will be. If you wish to address council at that meeting as well, you must submit a delegation form to the city no later than 2 p.m. tomorrow, that being Wednesday. Not a lot of notice, but of course, today's a Tuesday night. Planning meetings are normally held on a Monday night. Due to the long weekend, it's on a Tuesday night. The delegation form is available on the uh, city website. Due to the nature of our virtual meeting, the public has been asked to submit a request to speak in advance to allow for pre-meeting electronic connectivity tests with our IT department. Those wishing to make a presentation will join our meeting via video conference. There's five of them joining tonight or five different delegations for various uh, opinions. While those wishing to provide comments or answer questions, will only call into the meeting via telephone or also can pres uh, be present through Zoom here tonight. When recognized by the chair to speak, you must provide your name and address uh, for the public record and your exact role, for example, what company you work for uh, before giving comments. Only the applicant or people who provide oral or written comments regarding this application are entitled to appeal the council's decision to the local planning appeal tribunal. And I shall mention that there are written comments attached to uh, at least one of the uh, item agenda tonight. Of course, the city council members have uh, read the letters that are attached as well that are a part of uh, tonight's agenda. Uh, please keep your comments to planning matters only and avoid repeating comments that have already been expressed. And I, as the chair, will try to control the discussions as much as possible. If you have not provided oral or written comments but wish to receive formal notice of council's decision on this matter, Please contact the Clerk's Department of the City of Woodstock. The uh, notice will provide further information on appealing the decision. The planner will be asked to present their planning report for each application. Then the applicant will be allowed to provide an opportunity to make their comments. That's the applicant themselves, followed by those wishing to speak in favor of the application, and then those wishing to uh, speak in opposition of the application. And of course, if you just have general comments you'd like to make as well, if you're an applicant or somebody making a comment, so by all means, you're, you're more than free to do that as well. Um, and we're ready to start, therefore. And there are, as I mentioned before, there are three items on tonight's agenda. The first one is ZN8-20-14. It's an application for a zone change. Uh, the applicant is the Villages of Sally Creek, Inc., which of course is south of Oxford Road 17 and west of a Masters Drive. Our senior planner for the County of Oxford, Andrea Hackler, is here, and she will give her presentation at uh, this point in time. Go ahead, Andrea. Thank you. So I'm just going to share my screen here. Okay, so the first application for zone change is for uh, property or lands located in the villages of Sally Creek subdivision. Um, the applicant is proposing to rezone the subject lands from planned special planned unit development zone, which is a zone that is uh, found in the Sally Creek subdivision and it allows for a variety of residential uses. Um, and the applicant is proposing to rezone those lands to an active use open space zone. And uh, so council can see that that's just this parcel right here. Um, this will satisfy a condition of the draft approval draft plan approval uh, which allows or sorry which is um, allows the applicant to transfer lands to the city for the purposes of parkland. 
So in this case, the applicant is requesting to rezone this parcel of land, uh, which will be used for an active use parkland. Um, and the lands will be added to these lands, which are an passive use um, open space zone. And so these lands uh, hold a woodlot, which, which many are probably familiar with. Uh, so the passive use zone will remain on those lands, um, but these lands will be used more for rec or active recreational uses. And so that's why we would like to rezone those lands for uh, the active use open space. Uh, upon review, staff noticed that the minimum lot area for the OS2 zone is 2,000 square meters, whereas the applicant is proposing to transfer 1,980 square meters to the city. Uh, and so we would recommend that the lands be zoned um, a special active use open space zone to reflect the fact that uh, the parcel is slightly undersized. That being said, the overall parcel size for the, the two parcels will be a total of 2.08 hectares or 5.1 acres. And so staff are satisfied that uh, that there are really no concerns with the fact that this, this space is, is undersized um, as it'll be joined to a much larger parcel. In light of our review, we feel that the application is supportable. Uh, it's, pro it's proposing to add parkland to an area that will be registered in the near future and lots will be built in this area. It's uh, part of phase six two. It'll be, um, um, an area within a community that uh, supports recreational uses and leisure activities. It'll be a focal point for the community, uh, which is in keeping with both the provincial policy statement as well as the official plan. And uh, as I indicated before, we have no concerns with uh, the deficient lot area. And therefore we would recommend that this application be approved by council. Thanks, Andrea Hackler from the County of Oxford, the senior planner for her report. Are there any uh, questions for our planner uh, from anyone on uh, council? Go ahead, Mr. Ascioni, counselor. Thank you, sir. Uh, through the chair, of course, to Ms. Uh, Hatchler. Is there existing trails or a plan of putting any trails through that woodlot? And when you say parkland there, is that going to be putting a, a park in similar to Ludington Park or some of the other parks we've done around uh, the city of Woodstock? The plan for the, um, for the open space or the active use open space zone, my understanding is to be used for active parkland. So it could be a playground, it could be for, um, I mean, it could be for lawn bowling, it could be for a variety of things. Um, I don't know if the city parks department has determined that they didn't put that in their comments. So I'm not exactly sure on, on how they actually are planning to use it. Um, and then with respect to the, the woodlot, the OS1 zoning does allow for, for passive uses, which do include trails. Um, again, I don't know if uh, city parks department is proposing to put trails through there. Uh, but I can find that out for Thursday night. Okay, I'm just curious. Thank you. That's all. Any further questions or comments uh, from Council? Seeing none, I do notice that uh, Stephen Cornwall, the uh, planner, is on board from Sally Creek um, Inc. And also, of course, uh, Sierra Construction. If Mr. Uh, Cornwall has any comments he would like to make. It's his opportunity to do so now. Uh, Stephen, how, how are you this evening? And I guess make a comment as to, first of all, introduce yourself and your address and the company that you work for, though I just alluded to the fact where you work for, but uh, any kind of comments you'd like to make about this uh, subdivision uh, inclusion basically by the parkland. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just wanted to let you know, we're quite satisfied with this planning report from Andrea. Uh, the only item I can think of maybe uh, would like to bring to your attention is just that uh, when we made this application, uh, we were expecting to register all 70 of the remaining 
lots on Master's Drive uh, in the very near future. Uh, but after uh, reconsidering with our builders, it doesn't look like they'll be able to absorb all of that at once. So our proposal is shifted to doing 30 lots this year and 40 lots next year. So it just may be a, a little bit longer before the final component of masters is complete. Uh, but uh, I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has about the project. Are there any comments or questions from council for Mr. Cornwall, the planner? The planner for the applicant that is? I guess the one question I might have for you, uh, Mr. Cornwall, is, is the fact that if it wasn't for the allocation of this of this land, which isn't obviously a, a very large chunk of property, because uh, Andrew Hackler mentioned it was 1,980 square meters, it really does give access to the to the woodlot because if those were all uh, quite obviously if those were all building lots for homes and in, in, along that little bend corner on Masters Drive, there wouldn't wouldn't be any access to to the woodlot, would there? Because that would kind of almost make it landlocked by by the houses by the by the subdivision itself is that am i correct to assume that it really does help give access to the woodlot that's true i mean just to provide access wouldn't take a lot of space but uh sure this little active park will kind of have a, a dual function of of providing the city with access to the woodlot as well as just providing active uh, amenity space for the residents Okay, thank, thanks a lot to Mr. Cornwall. And at this point in time, I wanted to ask if there was anybody online right now who would like to speak in favor of this application. I don't believe we had anybody registered to speak in favor of the application here tonight. Is there anybody online right now who would like to speak against or make other additional comments against this uh, application to our planning meeting here tonight? Uh, seeing none, we certainly thank uh, Mr. Cornwall for his uh, participation here tonight, the uh, planner for Sally Creek. And of course, as I've mentioned at the top of the uh, program, at the top of the meeting here tonight, no decision will be made here tonight, but the next uh, city council meeting is uh, Thursday, October the 15th at 1.30 in the afternoon. And all three of these agenda items will then be on the uh, agenda for city council to make a, a formal decision at that point in time. And if you'd like to be a, a delegation member at that city council meeting, you have until 2 p.m. on Wednesday to uh, register with the uh, clerk office uh, for the uh, city of Woodstock to be a to be a delegation member on uh, Thursday's afternoon's meeting. And of course, Thursday afternoon's meeting will be broadcast live on YouTube as well. Moving forward in the agenda, the second of three items is ZN8-20-15, and it's an application for a zone change. I'm saying this name right, Ever CY Homes Inc which is 793 Devonshire Avenue is a residential address in the uh, city of Woodstock. And I invite our senior planner, Andrea Hackler from the County of Oxford to come on and give us a description as to what this uh, proposal or package is all about. Thank you. So this application for a zone change is a proposal to rezone the lands from residential zone one to a special residential zone two to facilitate the conversion of an existing single detached dwelling uh, to a converted dwelling house, which would have two units in it. The applicant is seeking special relief for um, to reduce the minimum lot frontage from 18 meters to 16.7 meters. Um, the applicant is proposing to accommodate the second unit in the basement of the existing dwelling and no exterior renovations are being proposed. The subject lands are currently 615.7 square meters and are occupied by a single detached dwelling and a garden shed. The surrounding area is predominantly single detached dwellings with uh, the indwell community housing facility to the east of the subject lands. Subject lands are located in an area that's designated low density residential, which allows for a mix of residential uses, which are single semis, towns, and low rise apartment buildings. Um, the application 
generally is supportable from by from a staff perspective. Uh, the application promotes intensification and it provides a mix of housing types to accommodate current and future residents of the regional market area. In our opinion, it's a, an efficient use of lands, uh, municipal services and infrastructure. And while the proposal, as I indicated, it's, it's generally a single detached dwelling area, um, while the proposal will introduce an alternative housing type into the existing residential neighborhood, we don't feel that the character of the neighborhood will be compromised as the applicant is not proposing any exterior renovations and the unit will be located in uh, the basement of the dwelling. Uh, further to that, we're satisfied that uh, the applicant can provide adequate parking for both units on the property. The current zoning, or sorry, the zoning bylaw requires for a converted dwelling house that uh, one space be provided per unit and uh, staff are satisfied that the applicant will have to widen the driveway to allow for the two spaces. However, we do feel that it, uh, it's feasible on this site as um, the site is, is adequately wide enough to accommodate parking in the, in the front yard. Um, in addition to that, the, although the applicant is requesting to reduce the minimum lot frontage, uh, staff are satisfied that this site is still providing adequate uh, setbacks, parking, uh, there's adequate space to get around the building for maintenance and rear yard access. Um, the just for council's information, generally a um, according to the to the zoning bylaw, a duplex, uh, the minimum area required for a duplex would be 540 square meters, and the applicant is proposing in excess of 615 square meters. So, in light of that, staff are satisfied uh, that the application can be approved by council. That being said, I should note too that upon uh, writing of this report, we had received a number of letters from neighboring property owners. Uh, the concerns were generally related to property value, parking, uh, as well as, as traffic in the area. Uh, staff are satisfied that, as I indicated, that parking can be accommodated on the site. Um, and that traffic is, is not a concern as uh, they're only proposing a single additional unit in, in addition to the, the existing unit. Um, so we don't feel that there will be an increase in, in traffic. Um, we've talked before council and staff about uh, Devonshire Avenue. It is an arterial road. So it is designed to handle heavier amounts of, of traffic as well. So as I indicated, we would recommend support for this application. Thanks to our senior planner from the County of Oxford, Andrea Hackler, for her report. Any questions for Andrea from a members of council at the, this point in time? Any comments or questions? So go ahead, Councillor Accioni. Thank you, uh, through the chair. To uh, Ms. Hatchler, um, I, I guess reading some of the comments and everything else from all the, the neighbors, I understand uh, nobody likes these uh, in their neighborhood. Unfortunately, it's just part of um, the province's plan going forward and everything else. Um, <laughs> driving by earlier today in this location, it does look like uh, parking was really the only uh, concern I guess I had. And I guess Ms. Hatchley, the only question for you would be, um, is one parking spot enough or Mr. Um, maybe Wallace should uh, answer that as you only need one additional parking for the unit. Mr. Chairman, through to the question about the parking requirements, the zoning bylaw just requires one parking space per dwelling unit. So if there's two dwelling units, then a total of two parking spaces are required on the site. And that's the same for uh, any converted dwelling house that's located in, in the city. Okay, I, I thought so. All right, thank you. Uh, go ahead, Connie Lauder, Councillor. Yes, through the chair to Ms. Hassler. Um, could you tell me about the widening of the drive? And there was a, a tree that is city owned and uh, 
are have they made arrangements to be able to widen that drive and not disrupt the the roots of the trees that was uh, one of the concerns of the parks department through the chair to councillor louder's question um the so with respect to the widening of the driveway uh, that was something that, that Craig had looked at and uh, he was of the opinion that it could in fact be wide and I believe it's about three meters wide right now, which is generally the width of a, a regular parking space. Um, and so it would have to be widened by another three meters. And yes, the parks department indicated that there's a large city owned spruce tree on the southwest corner of uh, the front boulevard. Um, and the tree is to be retained and any exterior work on the driveway widening should not come within the root zone. And so it wasn't determined, it's on the southwest corner. So it's, it's actually the opposite corner of um, where the driveway would be widened. If, if you like, actually I can share my, I'll share my screen again. And um, I can just show you so the driveway would be widened over here and this and the tree is over here. Um, so the comments from parks were generally that they they wanted any sort of work that would take place to make sure that it was far and far away um, enough from that tree. Um, and if it were damaged at all or anything like that, the applicant would be required to replace it. One other question, um, is, the, um, is this um, property uh, going to be owner occupied? I think that was a big concern of neighbors. Through the chair to councillor Lauder's question, uh, to be honest with you, that's not something that we, we ask the applicants who would be living in it uh, because that's not a planning consideration. So I, I can't answer that. Yeah. No, I didn't think that you could, but I, I thought I would just clarify that for, for my own self and for the anyone listening. Thank you. Any other further comments or questions coming from uh, council? I do have a, a question myself for the for the senior planner, not knowing what the specific answer might be for this, if there is a specific answer for it. In this case, the the conversion is planned on a on a on a, a bungalow house, so you would assume that if the basement of the is going to be the uh, separate living quarters. The basement is also essentially where the where the hot water heater would be and the furnace would be and and the electrical panel box and stuff for, for the regular uh, detached home under normal circumstances. Is there a minimum square footage that a, that a dwelling of this sort has to be? Um, does it have to be a minimum of say 700 square feet? Are there any minimums whatsoever from your department or as outlined for intensification within? Uh, guidelines set out by the, uh, the province of Ontario through the uh, uh, provincial policy statement. To your question, Councillor Schattenberg, uh, with respect to the zoning bylaw, we do not have a minimum um, area for for a residential dwelling unit. That being said, I do believe that the building code has minimum requirements for uh, residential dwelling units. So I will defer that uh, question to Mr. Wallace. Yeah, go ahead, Greg. Mr. Mr. Chairman, to answer your question, so in the R2 zone, a converted dwelling house, the minimum square footage for each unit is approximately 500 square feet. And under the building code, it doesn't give a, a minimum size for the entire unit, but it gives minimum sizes for kitchen, bedroom, just the individual room. So 500 minimum, as per the zoning bylaw, minimum 500 square feet is certainly would meet the requirements in the building code. I guess my follow-up question is to you, Mr. Wallace, as well. Driving by the property, it, it's very obvious and very apparent to, to be a walkout from the lower level. So therefore there must be a large enough windows. What would requirements be for a, say window sizes for bedrooms and stuff in a, in a basement dwelling uh, section 
uh, whether there's a walk out or a walk up or whatever sort of the egress would be for, for a property like that, uh, window sizes, would that be separate than say what a bedroom would normally be for a single detached home in a, in a family with a, a basement bedroom? Mr. Chairperson, so again, the building code does regulate the size of windows and the egress of that second unit, the exit. So the building code would require an individual exit out of the basement. So if this zoning application was approved, the applicant would come in and apply for a building permit with plans. And in that plans would show how the exit's going to work and what the sizes of the windows are. So at this point, we haven't been in the house. So I can't tell you how they're going to propose on how to enter and exit the basement apartment. Thanks, Lloyd. Any other comments or questions there for maybe follow-ups or anything from, from city council members? At this point in time, we do welcome the applicant on board. Uh, Chris Carter is here this evening. He's uh, the applicant representing 793 Devonshire Avenue th this evening. If you can give us your, your full name and, and your address and your title, Chris, Mr. Carter, for the uh, city clerk, that would be great at this point in time. Yeah, happy to. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name's Chris Carter. Uh, the uh, address is 793 Devonshire, and uh, I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to join and add comment. And any comments, therefore, from, from council or, or questions, therefore, for our, for our applicant? Do you have anything you'd like yeah. to say at the top of the top, Chris? Go ahead, for sure. Yeah, maybe, maybe I th thank you. Uh, maybe I will just because I know it was uh, uh, just recently discussed is um, this home actually is is rare because of the uh, grade of the back of the home. There's actually two uh, entry and exits to the basement. Um, there's one that's kind of uh, to the side of the home and then there's one that's that's right in the um, middle uh, of the exterior of the home. And because of the elevation uh, going all the way down, it's uh, uh, nice, big, bright windows and, and well above uh, minimum uh, square footage in the basement. Any questions from uh, council? I see that the councillor Accioni is, is uh... I'm trying to get on there. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Jerry. Okay, yeah, my video is not working for whatever reason. I look best in the dark, obviously. Uh, this is through <laughs> to the chair, of course, to Mr. Carter. I am just curious if you plan on residing in this or is this going to be a rental on both at both sides, uh, what your plans are if they're known at this time. Yeah, for sure. And I and I'm happy to share that I, I almost uh, uh, put my hand up there, but I didn't want to speak out of term. But uh, this is uh, purely an investment uh, for myself and my business partner. Um, it's worth noting that uh, the upstairs unit is already tenanted. Um, the uh, tenant moved in in June. Um, some of the neighbors on the call might have already met uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ralph. Um, it's worth noting that they're mature tenants. Um, both of them are, are, well, I better not give their age away, but, but mature tenants. Um, they're, uh, yeah, right. Uh, they're, uh, their lifestyle best suited uh, renting. Um, Mr. Ralph is in a wheelchair. Um, so the idea of a single level home, that elevation just fit their lifestyle perfectly. Um, and they didn't want uh, two floors of a house just simply because they couldn't access it. So it was a good fit for them. Um, I know some of the main concerns were, were uh, parking. I know we've talked about uh, non-issue and it's probably worth noting that there's actually a third parking spot. So um, they're not going to use it because they've only got one car. So think of that as maybe a, a, you know an overnight or a guest spot, but that'll be available to them. Um, and because of Mr. Ralph being in uh, the chair, we did have to accommodate that early on. So if anybody's driven by the house, they'll see that there's an accessibility ramp yeah, ramp. there's actually yeah. Two, two yeah there's one at the front of the home um so the question about the uh the beautiful tree on the front yard is is a great one but you'll see that uh because we've already done that cutout to allow for that ramp there's there's plenty plenty of room there um but yeah so it just it, it just suited their lifestyle and they've been great tenants they take care of the home um i know that was a question on the call as well too and then we've also too um uh, Mrs. Ralph is, is uh, uh, very much involved and very passionate about her home. So we're actually involving her 
should all go well and we be able to finish the the lower unit uh, involved in uh, uh, the applicant process um, so that she has somebody that um, she's comfortable down there and and obviously as you know and I, I heard it on the call it's it's very much an arterial road I mean it's it's directly on the number three bus route um, and then the number one bus route is just a few blocks east so we knew that when we looked at this property because it just I think it's going to be a great uh, starter home for someone um, and we're, we're excited Excited to make it as nice as it possibly can be. Um, and then also worth noting as well too, we do have no intention of changing the outside of the home, the character of the home, uh, adding on square footage. Um, that's just not, uh, uh, not needed in this home. It's just a lovely, logical uh, two unit home that should allow some families to come into the neighborhood and, um, you know, just start to, uh, start to do that, start to uh, get some new people there. Just if I can follow up, just one more quick question, uh, Chris. Uh, do you know approximately square footage down in the basement then that will be converted? Uh, I, I, I'm not looking at it. It's in excess of 700. So two bedroom? Yeah, the, the preliminary designs is going to be for, uh, for two. Um, I also heard the great question about the mechanical, um, things like, you know, the, the hot water and the HVAC. Um, my, myself and my business start, partner, Mike, have done this several times. We own homes in, uh, in Hamilton, in Burlington, in Woodstock. Um, there's really logical ways of doing it, and there's, there's great technology to allow for very little footprint of those components and make sure that it's, uh, um, you know, very well divided and, uh, and minimal uh, in that space. So uh, it, it'll make a great home for someone. Thank you for being here to answer those questions. Thank you guys. Any other questions or comments from city councilors? Seeing none, we thank uh, Chris Carter for joining us this evening. And we certainly want him to stay on board because we do have somebody that's registered to make uh, some comment. And as has been alluded to earlier, certainly by our senior planner as well, the uh, letters of explanation and letters of comment that have been attached to tonight's agenda. So they're actually online as well. If anybody would like to see them online, the, the same uh, letters that we're reading here are certainly online here tonight. Uh, but we do have a delegation that has registered to, to make their comment. So first of all, is there anyone that would like to speak in favor of the delegation? Anyone registered to speak in favor of this delegation or this application? Uh, seeing none, uh, th those registered to speak against it is uh, Wes and Longina Rezinski. If uh, Wes can uh, join us at this point in time, I'm sure our IT department will hook up Wes and uh, he can make any comments he would have if you can give, give us his name, his address, and uh, his uh, general opinion on this uh, project. Uh, well, hello. My name is actually Paul Rychinski. I'm the son of uh, uh, Wes and Longina. Um, uh, their uh, uh, English is a second language, so they've asked me to step in here. It's been a family home for almost 30 years. Um, we've grown up here, and it's always been uh, single-family uh, dwellings all around. Um, I know um, uh, Angela mentioned that there are uh, provisions for semis or um, uh, low um apartments but those are quite in a different location so for blocks in each direction they are actually all single family dwellings um, and primarily we wanted to address the, the the parking issue and the safety of uh, pulling in and out of these driveways. Um, Devonshire is one of the busiest uh, uh, streets in Woodstock and in single lane all the way down uh, in both directions it, it um, dissects basically Woodstock from east to west. Um, north of Devonshire um, is also um, dissected into two sections and all of the traffic north of Devonshire only has three arteries to come out. And the primary one is actually Leinster, which is the three houses away from uh, this intersection or this house proposed house is three or three houses away from that intersection. There's about 10, 15 apartment buildings that are right down Leinster and all of the traffic heads up to that intersection and has to look both ways to, to be able to pull out. There's city buses, there's school buses that are uh, pull out of there. Um, this intersection has been, uh, has had many accidents, uh, probably at least a dozen that we can remember 
and many of which were on a bright sunny day in the middle of uh, in the middle of the summer where you don't actually have to worry about weather or rain or things like that, simply because it's difficult to see when you're pulling out. When you look to the right pulling out of there, there's a big hill. Uh, when you look to the left, you're, you're dealing with traffic and you're dealing with parked cars. Um, which brings me to the um, comment about um, satisfactory parking. Um, I would say that currently there isn't satisfactory parking. Uh, the owner of this place has gone ahead and expanded the driveway already. So this actually driveway is uh, expanded uh, to the side. Um, and there is only one tenant. Um, many times during the week, there are two cars parked there. So in this case, if the secondary lane is uh, taken up by a secondary occupant, that, park, that car is going to have to be parked on the road. Um, because of the proximity to the corner, this house actually doesn't have street parking, which means it's getting pushed over to the fourth and fifth house. Um, so when you're standing on that intersection and trying to see whether you can pull out, you're now looking across driveways and you're looking up across multiple parked cars. Uh, the expansion of the driveway um, may not also meet uh, ambulance accessibility. Um, the backyard and the side entrance that was mentioned by Chris um, are not going to be accessible when there's cars parked there. Um, the original driveway was about three meters, uh, which is basically the width of one car, which means if you pull up a car between that house and the immediate fence on the right hand side, there's actually no room to bring a stretcher or anything else in, which may be of concern to the current tenants, which as mentioned before, are in a wheelchair. Um, in addition, uh, we wanted to mention that this is uh, the classic uh, larger business taking over and pricing out um, starter homes. Uh, Chris mentioned that this would make us a great starter home, um, but it's no longer available for starter homes. Uh, folks like that and businesses that have a lot larger capital have come in and snatched up some of these starter homes and turned them into um, equity properties. Um, so again, uh, we just wanted to mention that this street is very, very busy. It has a ton of traffic between about 8 a.m., actually even earlier, I'd say seven o'clock to about nine o'clock. It is near impossible to back out of that driveway and go the opposite direction eastbound on Devonshire. Many occasions you're, you're basically biting the bullet and you're driving down westbound and doing a UE further down the road because you simply can't pull it out. Um, so again, the extra traffic, uh, the extra uh, folks that are going to be in that area are going to make it a lot more dangerous, not only for the residents that are immediate in the area, but the thousands of people living in those apartment buildings off of Leinster. Um, also, there's no uh, direct division of the backyard, which uh, makes us uh, wonder what the division will be. The, right now, the, back, the basement apartment would have immediate access to the backyard, whereas the upstairs tenants would most likely, and they currently do, occupy the front yard. Um, so it's again, there's no direct plan uh, to to do that. So um, again, that's that's a, a few comments that we wanted to make. Uh, all in all, that it, it just seems um, we're we're looking at the almighty dollar over the safety and and convenience of the local citizens. Um, and thank you for the time uh, that, that we've had to share. Mr. Rosinski, I have a question for you. First of all, your parents live at what address? Immediately to the west uh, or to the east? 789 Devonshire. So they're immediate neighbors. I moved out about a year ago and, uh, or a couple of years ago, and I've basically grown up here for the last 25 years. Any comments for the Rosinski family from anyone on city council that would uh, have co comments or questions or concerns uh, for him? I see that our applicant, Chris Carter, is certainly still aboard here for this meeting. Mr. Carter, do you have any comments or, or answers you may have for Mr. Rosinski's uh, concerns um, as, as they were presented tonight? Yeah, uh, so happy to add some comments. I, I don't know if I've got all the answers, but first and foremost, great to have a son like that that puts in the time to be on the call. I have a lot of respect for that. Um, obviously, as far as the safety comments are concerned, I mean, th this is why there's, you know, such well-documented uh, both building codes, bylaws, uh, you know, those are all with safety in mind. And we certainly wouldn't do anything to, to you know, uh, uh, jeopardize the safety or, or the measures that have been put in place. I think 
I think there's a couple things that I just want to add. First and foremost, whether it's a single family living in a dwelling or, or in a multifamily situation, there's no guarantee that that would be a larger or a smaller number. I'm, I'm sure as you've seen, there's families of you know, five or six that would share a home this size. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to say that by dividing the space, that's going to be a multiplier for uh, people living in the home. And it's certainly not gonna be a multiplier for vehicles in the home. And, and in fact, often cases, those that are, are, are you know, choosing to rent uh, may not have, uh, you know, vehicle or certainly not vehicles just because of living circumstances and, and where they are economically. Um, myself and my partner, Mike, are not big money. We're not commercial people that want to build, you know, these, these low rise or, or high rise. We're, we're not there. We're, um, the name of our company is Eversee. Um, Mike's first son was Everett. My first daughter was Lucy. Um, we just started buying homes, but we're, we're construction guys. We, um, you know, we, we work and we build homes, but these are just long-term holds. And we know how important it is to choose excellent tenants. Um, so we put in a lot of time. Um, so, you know, the, the folks that are living there will have um, you know, be properly vetted and, and ensure that they fit into the, the, you know, character of the neighborhood and, and have, you know, safety in mind. Um, and then, you know, as uh, uh, I'm sorry, I missed his name, but the other gentleman alluded, th the next stage is to make sure that we do have, you know, thoughtful drawings in place uh, with all things considered to make sure that this is, you know, well uh, uh, in line with any city guidelines and, and safety measures. So um, we, we certainly have done this before, you know, things like how to divide assets and allow access and you know, we, we do have some experience with that. So we're, we're confident that we're going to be able to do a great job given the opportunity from, from council. At this point in time, any follow-up questions or comments from, from city council members? If not, we can uh, certainly move forward. And again, no decisions are made at this meeting here tonight. This meeting is just for information purposes and the next city council meeting is on Thursday. These will be items will be on the agenda on Thursday, October the 15th at 1.30. And if you wanna to register to be a delegation at the city council, uh, you have till 2 p.m. tomorrow, that's Wednesday, to uh, contact the city clerk to be part of the delegation and the delegation forms are available on the uh, city website. As I mentioned before, there's three items on tonight's agenda. This is item number three now, ZN8-20-16. It's an application for a zone change. Uh, applicants are Richard Correa and Daryl Benbow, and the address is 75 Brock Street in the uh, city of Woodstock. We welcome back our senior planner, Andrea Hackler from the uh, County of Oxford office to give us an explanation as to what the uh, proposed plan is for 75 Brock Street. Thank you. Uh, the next application for a zone change is to rezone the subject lands from entrepreneurial district zone C3 to a special entrepreneurial district zone, um, which would include a number of special provisions to facilitate the construction of a fourplex on the subject property. And my apologies, I forgot to share the screen here. There we go. So as uh, Councillor Schattenberg indicated, this is for lands located at 75 Brock Street. And the applicant is seeking to um, seeking the zone change to facilitate a three-story fourplex on the subject lands. Uh, the applicant is requesting relief from the minimum lot area, lot frontage, minimum interior side yard width as well as decreasing the minimum required landscape open space and increasing the maximum parking area coverage in the front yard. Uh, the subject lands are currently 466.8 square meters in area and there is currently an existing single detached dwelling on the property. If this application is approved, the dwelling will be uh, removed. Within this area, there's a number of different, uh, there's a mix of housing types. There's a mix of low and medium density residential development, including single detached dwellings, converted dwellings, fourplexes, as well as an apartment dwelling house. Uh, 
as council may may be aware this area is located within what uh, we describe as the central area it is outside the central business district and it's it's described as the entrepreneurial district uh, within this designation, low and medium density residential development is, is permitted, as well as, um, as some commercial type uses. Uh, the idea is to intensify this area over time so that it can be complementary to the uses in the downtown um, and people in this area can, can uh, take advantage of, of the amenities in the area. The application was circulated to a number of agencies. Staff were supportive of the application. Um, the Parks Department and as well as the Engineering Department indicated that obviously this proposal would be subject to site plan approval, at which time they would uh, take a closer look at landscaping, uh, grading, drainage, uh, lighting as well as, as any sort of fencing that would be required uh, to ensure compatibility with, with this development as well as, as neighboring properties. I'm just going to scroll down here so you can take a look at, here's, a, here's the, um, the proposed site plan, which shows the building. Um, and then here's what the applicant's proposing the, the building to look like. So generally staff are satisfied with the application. We feel that it's in keeping with the provincial policy statement. It's a form of residential intensification. And as I indicated, it would be complementary to the downtown, um, which is, is the you know, central to, to the city. Uh, in addition to that, it's, uh, there are mix, a real mix of houses in the area. And so we feel that this would be complementary to the area as well. And, and it, it would maintain the character of the area. Uh, this area is in keeping, or sorry, this area is also subject to the central uh, design study uh, guidelines. And so basically what that indicates is that these buildings, new buildings that are built in this area are subject to specific design requirements. Uh, in this case, this area is supposed to be Victorian style uh, developments. And we feel that the applicant is presenting a, a development that would be in keeping with, with um, those guidelines. Further to that, we would be further discussing the, you know, the building materials to ensure that they maintain um, the character as well as uh, we could even discuss um, the color palette of the, of the building which the applicant has already indicated they would be willing to um, to propose whatever color um, we, we thought would be in keeping with them um, with victorian style developments um, we feel also that as it as this is part of the entrepreneurial district, this is a medium density type development. Uh, it's three stories. The area allows up to four stories. Um, the applicant is providing the required amount of parking. Uh, in addition to that, any additional parking that could be required if there's if there's a visitor parking um, that's required for overnight. There's a number of municipal parking lots that. Uh, visitors could use, as well as if um, a tenant had multiple vehicles, they could subscribe to uh, municipal parking as well. Um, with respect to the, um, the deficiency or the, um, the requested relief that the applicant is, is asking, uh, staff are satisfied that, uh, that the relief can be considered minor and that the site will still have adequate space for landscaping and drainage as well as parking, uh, there's still adequate space to buffer the development from surrounding properties. Um, and as I indicated before, the application will be subject to site plan approval where we'll discuss, um, you know, drainage and, um, and lighting and access and, um, a number of other issues. So in light of that, we're satisfied with this application and we feel that it's a, it's a good, it's good planning for the area. At this point in time, I certainly want to open up the floor for council's uh, comment or 
questions for our senior planner or for that matter, even our, the building department for the city of Woodstock, if there's any questions from council members. Council may have questions for the delegation that's a part of the, the application here tonight is the applicant, Daryl Benbow is, is present. Uh, first of all, Daryl, if you can give us your, your, your name and, and your address, your residential address that is, and your uh, role in this application to the uh, city of Woodstock, that would be uh, appreciated. And any comments you just sort of would like to make to follow up what the uh, planner has said. Sounds good, thank you. Um, yeah, Andrew, I think you did a pretty good job there. Um, the, uh, my name is yeah, Daryl Bambo, uh, just live north of Intercap, uh, Township Road 9, 846240. Um, so my wife and I are the owners of the property that we had just acquired uh, mid-summer. If there's any questions, happy to answer. Are there any comments from uh, or questions from council? I guess I do have a question for you, Daryl. By looking at the, the the drawings of the proposed the building, it would appear that the uh, person that lives in the main floor on the first level or the lowest level would only have an access or an egress into the back of the property. With another, in essence, at the front, would it basically be a, a basement apartment uh, based on the lay of the land, so to speak. Is yeah, there'll be. Yeah. That's right. Um, it would be, we, I guess we looked at designing it from each apartment would have their own access. So there's no common areas. Also trying to make it, if you notice the, the, uh, the front of the building, uh, just trying to keep with making it look like a residential property and not, you know, not like a commercial multi-unit. So the, instead of having four doors at the front of the building, uh, we, you know, to get access to all four dwellings, we will, we tried to mix up the, uh, you know, use all the sides of the building for, for accesses. So that's right, we would have uh, the, the rear of the building would, would be the uh, entrance and exit. Um, but being with the slope of the land too, we'll get some pretty big windows. I think in the, uh, in the, the case before this that we had, uh, one of the questions was regarding to the, the basement code for the windows. Uh, so we feel like we'll have the pretty ac adequate sunlight going through there. Uh, we have done other properties like this where we've tried to maximize the amount of uh, sunlight to the basement, not making it feel like a basement and having large windows as, as large as uh, we can. So, Any comments or questions there for our follow-ups from members of council at this point in time? As I mentioned before, we did have uh, people who wanted to be a delegation or people who wanted to uh, respond or, or talk to the the applicant to be able to register ahead of time. So that at this point in time, I will ask if there's anybody who wants to speak in favor of the application that has registered and is online at this point in time. Anyone who wants to speak in favor of it. I do believe nobody would register, but to, the next line therefore is to speak to, have the speaker or discussion with anyone who is against or makes want to make other additional comments about the application. And I know we have a Barrett Stemler and an Alex Hertzberger online, if, if they would like to come in now and make their gen general comments. First of all, tell us your names and, and your address so we know exactly where you live uh, in comparison to 75 Brock Street and uh, any kind of comments you'd like to make. Yes, um, I'm Alexandra Stemler or Hertzberger and this is my husband, Barrett Stemler, and we live directly beside um, the property in question at 73, right? Is it 73? Brock Street, <laughs> not um, would it be okay if I read something that I've, I've written? Because I'm a little bit nervous and I've never done this before. So I oh, thought I'd be prepared. Go ahead. Okay, so good evening. Like, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm Alex and yep, this is my husband, Barrett. Um, we reside at 73 Brock Street, beside 75 Brock Street, the property in question for the zoning change. Uh, we recently purchased 73 Brock Street and we moved in at the end of April after doing extensive uh, renovations on the inside. Um, we're deeply concerned by the proposed zoning change as it will directly affect our day-to-day -day lives during construction as well as afterwards. Uh, we have been informed by our realtor and our real estate lawyer that it will devalue our property. 
I stay at home currently with our two children. Um, my daughter is two. Her name is Molly and our son is Charlie and he's five. Uh, we are home all day, uh, every day because of COVID. Charlie is enrolled in online learning for a couple of hours a day and I homeschool him for the rest of the day uh, to the best of my abilities. I'm not a teacher, but I was raised by one. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, he is a very smart boy and I fear that with the loud machinery, constant construction, the banging and the loud noises coming from outside his classroom at all hours, well, yeah, for months on end, it will be very difficult for him to concentrate on his learning. And he is very, very bright. He already does his addition and subtraction, his geography, his sight word reading and some sciences. Uh, Molly sleeps in the afternoon and I'm not sure how much rest that she'll be able to get with all the loud noise outside her bedroom. Uh, she's a really light sleeper, especially during the day. We also have two really big dogs uh, who are always on high alert outside in our fenced yard. Uh, with all the constant noise, we are concerned that the dogs will be disrupted, causing our kids to be disrupted constantly. And this will make it hard for our son to learn and for our daughter to be able to sleep. After the proposed construction is complete, a three-story building will completely block our only view out our kitchen and large dining room windows. Currently, the home beside us has a nice green space uh, in the backyard, and it's quite a pleasant view. We can currently see the sky and the trees change color. Uh, but we'll no longer be able to do that if there's a massive three-story, four-unit building blocking it. This proposed fourplex building will bring heavier traffic into our relatively quiet street, and it will also take away the privacy of our backyard where our kids spend the majority of their time when they're not learning or sleeping. Uh, the proposed building could give four units a direct view not only into our home, but into our backyard as well. When we purchased this home, we were happy to see that a nice single family home was beside it, which was uh, then inhabited by a nice family as well. This home is our biggest investment and we have put a lot of time and money into refinishing it. We were going to have the outside repainted and refinished in our front porch as well before moving in. But unfortunately, when we moved in, uh, the furnace needed to be replaced. Uh, this hidden expense was not within our budget and has set us back to next year for resurfacing our porch and exterior. We have sent emails from both our realtor and our real estate lawyer who have both advised us that the building of a fourplex we devalue our home. We basically have everything tied up in this house uh, and we bought this house before the pandemic began and we are currently living in unprecedented times. My children and I have nowhere to go during the daytime to avoid the disruption of construction beside us. We will essentially be trapped in a construction zone for an extended period of time. And this is not going to allow us to have a comfortable, healthy, stress-free living and learning environment. I don't wanna feel like my family is being violated. <laughs> the building of this complex would make it very hard for us and our children to live our day-to-day -day lives in peace while we are trapped at home. Once finished, it will eliminate any light from our living space. It will take all our privacy and to top it all off, it will then take money out of our pockets. We hope that the council will consider our family and our children's best interest when making their decision. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Alex, for your uh, obviously very emotional appeal, emotional uh, comments. Can, would the uh, applicant to Mr. Benbo have any uh, questions that he could answer that to to the app, uh, to the delegation's concerns, uh, whether they be for for viewing and, and windows and size size of the structure? Certainly, <clears throat> yeah, happy to. And uh, yeah, thanks. Certainly, thanks for the uh, the concerns to bring to our attention. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I would say just from uh, so I would say myself and my wife, we have a, you know, a four-year-old and a two-year-old, so I can certainly respect where you're coming from. Um, the, uh, it, looking at it from, uh, from a build perspective and, you know, I, we're, we're also keeping our, our, our child home for, for online learning just during these times as well. So I can certainly respect that. Um, we'll likely be looking at a, a spring to late spring build. So hopefully there's minimal impact as far as, you know, the day-to-day 
education from that perspective. Um, yeah, as far as construction goes, I think, you know, that goes outside, like there will be, you know, it would be during the working, the working days and um, it would be, you know, hopefully COVID, you know, no one knows what's going to happen by then, but uh, hopefully COVID has slowed down and things, uh, you know, I guess more individuals are back at work and whatnot, but we don't know what the future brings from that perspective. So I can, you know, certainly understand that. Um, from it, just from the abstraction for the building right now, it is a two-story building. Uh, so, you know, I would say we do like to, we take pride in what, it, what we're building or, you know, we look at it from, uh, we're not a big corporation. You know, we are we live very local. We, the other buildings that we have, we, we check up on, we, uh, you know, we certainly, you know, I would say our tenants uh, are, you know, quite like us from that perspective for the upkeep, really trying to intensify and um, really bring the, uh, the life back to the building. This, this place and anyone who's drove, boat, drove by the place, it's quite run down. Um, it, uh, you know, the ba between leaky basement, uh, you know, there's, uh, it, it, it's very depressed, uh, the overgrown backyard, which we had, uh, you know, we've, we've had uh, at least people coming in here, property manager coming, trying to clean up what we can, but really our, our ultimate goal is hopefully to maybe increase the value of your home, not decrease it, to be honest. And I think uh, from a multi-residential, this really won't look like a multi-res, just having the, we tried to keep, uh, like I mentioned before, the look of the building, trying to keep with the character of the um, um, of, of, of the street, as well as, you know, I, and I would comment right across the street, there are four fourplexes and uh, just on the corner of Simcoe and Brock, the thir a 13 unit building as well, but the side of the street, um, which would be the east side of the street currently doesn't have anything. Uh, but re again, directly right across does have the fourplex building. So, uh, you know, I think as far as the central guideline districts that allow for, you know, medium density area and trying to bring people to intensify the downtown core. Uh, you know, I think this, you know, we're not bringing a lot of units, but I think we're, you know, hopefully doing a part in far as trying try an intensification or try to intensify that. Um, you know, I, and I think, you know, we have, a, it's a two story building now. Uh, yes, there will be a, th a third story, the other one sunk down from a basement. So I don't think from a height restriction, I think it will be a bit higher, but it, you know, we really didn't want to look, make this look like an eyesore. And we took that uh, into design when we had our architect design it. Um, you, know, you know, so as far as the, the value goes, you know, yes, you're going to be multifamily uh, right beside, but right across the street, there's four fourplexes. So I don't know how that, that would decrease the value, but I, again, I'm not a realtor myself, so I don't, uh, you know, I don't partake that, but I am uh, yeah, an accountant and a banker from that perspective and deal with residential homes all the day long. So I feel like, you know, there would be, um, from a value perspective, I could see that, uh, you know, um, you know, a, a brand new building going beside um, may not hurt the value from that perspective, but um yeah, thank you for the comments. Do appreciate it. And um, yeah, like as far as the quietness goes, uh, you know, certainly respectful of that. We will be working during the daytimes when the when the construction does does uh, does start in the spring. So, I will give one last opportunity for anyone from council who'd like to make any uh, have any questions, either for the delegation or to make a. Uh, comments in, in general to, to Mr. Ben Bowler, comments in general on this application. Go ahead, Councillor Connie Lauder. Um, yes, through the chair to Mr. Ben Bowler. I just want to um, check on the parking. I know that it's been mentioned. And uh, would there be certainly sufficient parking so that if there were some visitors, or maybe they don't need that. I know you can use other parking lots, but I know people seem to like to park on the street along there because I've driven down there sometimes and there's quite a few. So um, is, is there any extra or will there just be the, the, um, enough for each of the units that you're going to have there? At, the, at this point in our designs, there'll be enough for each of the units. There'll be four, which is also required one spot per unit. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. If there's uh, nothing further, we will wrap up for tonight. I certainly wanna thank everyone for their uh, participation in tonight's uh, public meeting. Senior planner from the County of Oxford, Andrea Hackler from the building department, uh, Craig Wallace, chief building officer for the uh, city of Woodstock. 
Uh, again, no decision will be made at tonight's uh, meeting whatsoever, but it will be on the agenda, will appear on the agenda for a regular city council meeting for the city of Woodstock on uh, Thursday at 1.30. And of course, you'll be able to watch that uh, live on the city's YouTube channel and also on the uh, city of Woodstock uh, website as well. And that's where you'll be able to see the full agenda for Thursday's the city council meeting, planning matters, but every item from the city council agenda is on, under agendas, meetings and minutes under inside city hall heading on the city of Woodstock.ca homepage. So I thank everyone for uh, participating. And if you do want to be a delegation at Thursday's city council meeting, you have an essence until two o'clock tomorrow afternoon, that being Wednesday, to uh, go through the city clerk or find the delegation form on the city of Woodstock website to be able to uh, participate. Uh, thanks for uh, participating.